Kenny Bunkport in Maine, New England. Lobster fishing has long been one of the main industries here, but these days you don't have to be a professional seafarer to share the experience. You know, on the way out of the river, I'm telling all the guests, uh, you know, about the local history, about uh, you know what types of boats uh, the lobstermen use, uh, how we identify our lobster traps. Uh, really, just all about the local history in the river here in Kenny Bunk. That's the scenic part of the trip. Then we get into our lobster part of the trip, and we go out. We go fishing and haul some lobster traps, and uh, that's when it really gets fun. Well, we just spotted one of our buoys out here, so we're gonna, Captain Bob here is gonna go and see if we can haul up one of our traps, and uh, hopefully we got some lobsters down deep. Captain Bob's gonna lift that buoy right over that pulley there, and then that's right ready. around that dinner plate looking thing, which is called a hauler. And 30 feet from that buoy is the lobster trap, and we'll see what we got in here. There's really no way of telling. Uh, this is going to be a, a four foot, looks like a four foot lobster oh, trap. Oh, there we go. See the bait. Oh, oh wow. wow. All right. How many in there? One, this is a good catch right here. It's a good size lobster here. I can already tell it's a male lobster here just by the size of the claw. Yeah. Males usually have a bigger, more dominant crusher claw here. He doesn't really have any predators on the ocean floor uh, once they get to about this size. The biggest predator that this guy's gonna have is gonna be the lobster man himself. Yeah, so. do they get any bigger than this? Yeah, uh, they do actually get bigger than this. Uh, the largest lobster ever caught was about 44 pounds off of Nova Scotia and had to grab the claws like this <laughs> and the tail was hanging on the floor. So if we were a commercial lobster boat, we would have a live well on board with constant salt water moving through it. And it would be someone's dinner tonight. How about you put a few bands on these claws? Okay, there we go. Double handing yeah. here. Little twist. Little twist. Then oh, pull. look at Just that. Like that. Smooth. Yeah. Yep. Here we go. That's what this was the pincer claw. This kind of oh, used. This is this claw is what it uses to kind of pick and rip at its food. Rock oh, the tip right over yeah. the claw. We are twisting twist. away. For some reason, this lobster uh, in the Gulf of Maine here is the most popular. Uh, we ship our lobsters throughout the entire world. Uh, you know, I, I think it's, ours is the tastiest lobster. Well, they do say if you love someone, you must set them free. And I think the same goes for a lobster. And I've kind of grown quite fond of young Larry here. So away into the ocean, my pretty. Mwah. So from Maine through New Hampshire to Massachusetts and to Woodman's, a big name around these parts when it comes to seafood dining. They say they invented the fried clam here, but I'm after their lobster know-how. Well, with me is lobster expert Steve, and he's going to show me just how to attack this. Steve, what do we do first? Well, the first thing you want to do is, is make it easy for yourself, and that's what we do here at Woodman's. We cook the lobster for you, and then we prepare it for you. As you notice, we don't have any crackers here, so you don't have to fool around with trying to crack the shell, and that can be intimidating. So what we do is we take a big knife, and we crack it for you so you can just pull it open. Oh, lovely Look stuff. Look at that. So sweet, so good. Well, my New England lobster journey now is pretty much at an end. I've seen them caught, seen them cooked, and now I've eaten one myself. Another dozen or so more, and I reckon I'll be an expert. 